Hello and welcome everybody to game one in this final of the December Deadlock Tournament. Best of three here as Kiesel and Matiz face off, both from the PAG clan in this final. Kiesel managed to finish his semi-final game in the quickest time, so he gets to choose this map. And he chose this moon that he was very successful on earlier. Kiesel once again in black on the North Pole. And looking over down to the south is Matisse. I am <coughs> Z4X, and I'm joined here by Marshall. Hello there. <clears throat> and we are replaying the map from the previous round as per Kizel's choice. And Kizel again going bots and air, while Matisse has not yet queued up his second factory because he's too busy assisting a fabricator out, which we see quite often in the high level games there. And using Indeed, a commander to uh... get mechs. Yep, yep, I've seen that very often with uh, getting a commander to get mechs before you move on to your second fact. Nothing queued up though for Matisse. This is a, really a bit of an error for Matisse. Tons of stuff he's not doing right now. He is starting on that air, looking over at Kiesel though, already halfway through that air. A little bit ahead right now, sending out his first engineer to build those first mechs. Nice job there, and I suspect Matisse yeah, now queued up a P-Gen and a bot factory following on from what he was before, and Kizel now queued up the, uh, the second bot and second air as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously things are going to be very even at this stage. I wonder if we're going to see Kizel once again go for these C mech, uh, three, six mechs. A really big amount of fighting. Of course on the opposite side of the planet over here, Everything is super open and very spaced out, which makes it difficult to defend. Mm. I think that's why we're seeing players concentrate in between these cracks, where it's a bit easier to defend. Engagement there, won by uh, Kiesel, just because he had slightly more units there streaming in. Well, he had an extra unit streaming in, so I think it was pretty much even Stevens exchanged there. Um... Uh, so a slight lead for Matisse right now. He's managed to build up his medal a little bit quicker. Yeah. And radar also coming up from Matisse at the South Pole, next to the crack. Interesting placement on that uh, on that radar. And it is Matisse now starting a second air. Going to be trying to get S priority as soon as he can, but Kizel already with three interceptors in his interceptors in his interceptors in his base there, and quite a few docks as well. And the second air is now up for him as well, so that's going to get him some bombers. <coughs> yep, both players now two bot factories, two air factories, pretty even between them, very even on eco. One more power gen for Matisse, however. More confrontations happening as they start contesting these areas of mechs. Kiesel has a lot of docks in between uh, these four mechs, between the two cracks. Yeah. And really holding on to that area, actually. Streaming all of his forces in there. One engineer now heading on his way over there to get there. Got a couple of turrets planned as well. The bomber's ready for Matisse to come in now because there's a distinct oh, lack of Kiesel's air. Kiesel's got raiding on the backside of the planet. Oh, this engineer from Matisse. Oh, he's so lucky. Kiesel did not notice. He's in vision range. And he know he turned around. What happened? I think that was the guard radius. They went out there and then went back and didn't finish him. That engineer, amazingly, is going to get away. Kiesel evidently concentrating on other areas right now. Mm. Concentrating on his air game. Yeah, there was a big air confrontation there. Uh, around here about uh, 20 seconds ago in the chrono cam if you want to see it but I don't blame you for not because there's so much going on all the time in this sort of a game because you now got docks just trying to maintain control I think is pretty much what we have currently and uh, mechs raiding there taking, oh. out that, taking down that fabricator that was pretty good yeah Matisse is leading on metal because he's <clears> expanded <throat> so much but Kiesel is getting all the wins against these engineers and he's now secured this area as the engineer builds single laser turrets he still has docks there to protect and he can start taking those four mechs another engineer as well over here for Kiesel taking that map control commander now moving forwards from Kiesel as well going to aggressively take this middle area if he gets up some walls it'll make it very easy for him to control that area and to control the mechs to the left and right Kiesel making great moves aggressively even though he currently trails by a lot on the metal front oh yeah 
and even uh, more air factories coming up from Matisse. So he's now got three air factories, and he's transitioning to vehicles as well. Now this is interesting, given that Kiesel's commander is quite so far out the front. What's his build queue? Let's have a look. It looks as though he's building walls to try and wall Matisse in there. If you see the, uh, you can see the ghost outlines, and if he manages to get that up, that'll be really, really good for him, I think. <clears throat> especially with Matisse's transition to vehicles, but Matisse pushing his commander out now as well, now that he has an entourage of tanks, and another air factory going up in his base. He wants that air game again. Yeah, looking at the back side of the planet, uh, where Matisse had managed to expand, a bomber there took out the engineer. He's now got his own units there, so he can contest this area and get rid of the mechs from Matisse and actually even up the metal stakes completely. Matisse has uh, taken a lot of raiding, but he's expanded in so many areas, he does still end up ahead. Getting up walls and turrets over here on the middle side for Cassell. And uh, that will help him defend. It looks like he isn't going to actually contest the middle, he's going to contest the right-hand area to control that. Getting up walls at an angle as well, to make it hard for Matisse to make progress here. But Matisse heading forwards, and he's got a lot of support as well. He could reclaim mm. these walls and try and come crashing in. The reclaiming is a little bit slow, though. We'll leave him vulnerable to uber cannons. More raiding happening on the other side of the planet. Two docks manage to kill each other, but Kissel still has the advantage on the opposite side of the planet as he pushes forwards, takes care of more of these mechs, even metal, but Matisse is about to start falling behind as Kissel raids with those docks. On the Real comboxing going on in the middle right yeah, now as we have thing. lots of these. Wow, that uber cannon was really good. Matisse there falling to 85, whereas Kissel is now 81 and the unit's moving around. So, wow, this is going to be really close here oh, if these commanders. Kissel oh, wow, Kissel. He doesn't seem to mind. He's, he's got a lot lower... D well, I think... <laughs> if Matisse can bring in some bombers now, he can secure this as a win. Oh, but this in the is so risky. Oh, wow. And Matisse now is fighting behind walls. Oh, Matisse has just oh. turned this around. Kissel just stood there. And <laughs> Matisse could lose it right now. He is in trouble as he's been surrounded yeah. by docks. He's got his tanks coming in, which will help support <laughs> a huge amount. Falling down to 34%, taking more fire. 45% for wow. Kissel. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we can also see the raiding coming in with Kissel raiding around the back of Matisse's base, just focusing on the mechs and trying to hit his eco. Matisse down on 51, Kissel <laughs> soaring ahead on 92 metal, and uh, we're going to see the tanks go to the left hand side trying to contest this area. But walls going up in front of this single laser turret. If the walls go up quick enough, which it looks like they will do, then I think these tanks can be stopped just about. Wall goes up in time, no. engineer goes oh. down though. Wow. Wow, that was actually a huge win for Matisse. Came in just at the right time to take out that uh, single laser turret before. There's docks coming tanks. in for flanking to try and uh, resupport it, though. But Matisse's commander really out in the open. A few bombers. Just a few bombers. <laughs> That's all it's going to take. But uh, vehicle French is going up from uh, Kiesel now in that center area, probably to try and just bolster that. Just using the extra health of those tanks to uh, support that whole central central region there. But wow, Kissel's doing a brilliant job. He has yeah. denied all of the expansion from Matisse. He did some excellent raiding during that comm fight. He has now secured a very important area. He can rebuild those four mechs. He can start rebuilding these six mechs. He's got more and more vehicle factories up with the commander here, which is going to protect him um, and get out more units for a staging ground as well and really solidify his control of that area. So he has a huge amount of map control right now, and Matisse is going to have to fight hard to get more metal because Matisse actually is leading on power by a nice amount and um, he just needs to work on his hardcore expansion as he does to support uh, to support that power income he has yeah and he's just started it now securing out the uh, the back garden from his base there with the uh, the two fabbers so they'll be building up those mechs pretty pretty quickly but there's so many docks just roaming around although because they are roaming around in their single ones and uh, ones and twos they aren't really going to make any form of large lasting impact on this uh, large docks group from Matisse I think yeah, it was potentially a mistake from Kissel. I think Kissel might be splitting up his forces for the bombers. I'm not sure why, but he's now moving in a whole load of fighters. Uh, very even between the teams. Kissel looks like he has a slight advantage. He's going to fight over the. Oh, there we go. Nice. Wow. He the bombers really wins that confrontation. And the and fabricators. The oh, wow. And now can take pot shots at these docks. Stalling a little trying bit. To, trying to dodge. It looks like he doesn't have enough power. That's why they weren't reloading. But it doesn't matter, he finishes it off there and down oh. goes all those dots. He loses the bomber, but no problem. He's got a big win, and more importantly, he's prevented Matisse from expanding here. If Matisse had got that medal, he'd be way back in the game. But if he can keep stopping him from doing this, 
then it's just going to make it very, very difficult for Matiz to make a comeback. Matiz sending his commander out that way. Indeed, another mix goes down there from the docks. This is really good play from Cassell. I think not going too heavy on vehicles is allowing him to do this. And I think once he sort of builds up his vehicles, which he's starting to do in the, the central region here, I think that'll uh, come into his favour. But Matisse still expanding in different regions. With <laughs> You've got two fabricators across from each other expanding. Incredible. Uh, Giselle must notice this right now. Reclaim command already given on <laughs> hey! by Matisse. Matisse is ahead. Do we see any bombers? Do we see any docks? We, is that a bomber in this group from Giselle? No, it doesn't look like it. No, it's not. It's running away, though, to try and get to the docks as soon as it can. Yeah. Wow, He'll he wants right. that He'll fabricator. Right. The reclaiming is pretty slow. He just got <laughs> finished off. And now they can just go in and take out that mix as well. Meanwhile, on the other side, Matisse's commander got quite a few units there next to him, plus a substantial number of interceptors. While uh, Kizel's still trying to establish this base in the middle, again, those six mechs there are going to be really easy to defend if he can really establish that base there. No, uh, Matiz obviously a bit risky with his commander, but I think at this stage he's got to be aggressive and be risky or, or the game's over anyway. Um, and these tanks coming in are just firing at range. They're not being aggressive and going in. They're actually holding the Infernos back and taking care of units at range because Matisse can't really start a confrontation here. Mm. Um, Matisse might even be looking for a commander attack coming in from behind here. I think that might be what he's doing. He's looking for the snipe attempt. He's losing yeah. the main base. Those docks coming in at the main base as well. This pretty much seals the deal. His main base is done for and I think he needs a snipe attempt. What can Kissel see? Kissel can see everything he needs to with his radar coverage right now. Using his fighters but he's outnumbered and in trouble. Matisse is going to go for the all in. Kissel heading towards him. I think at this point for Kissel, just get a wall up. He is outnumbered in terms of units. Might even end up pulling his units back. His units now are just reaping through the main base. Yeah, there's no fabricators going out there. So Matisse's rapid expansion is gone. Uh, Kissel has map control over everything else and fabricators everywhere. So this is it. It's the all or nothing. And if Matisse plays it right, he can get the all. He just has to play it right. I think this is Kissel's match to lose right now. It's all about whether he screws up. He has the intel. He knows how many units are there. He knows the rough composition. And he can see them coming. He has so much warning right now. As mm. we watch in the pit, the commands are beginning to get closer to each other. He needs and to build a few walls. there's now more tanks as well from Kissel. There's an Uber cannon. The Uber cannons are going to help, but it's probably not going to be enough. Kissel not really in the right position right now, but both commanders low, so they don't want to be in the thick of the fight. Almost coming in from Kiesel as well from behind, so that's going to even the stakes up quite a bit there as all the tanks go down. Oh, oh wow, this yeah. is going to be really close, but I think Big the bombers wins. are going to help it. It's close, 27% for the commander, 26% very even. I think Matisse is going to try and Matisse force a draw. In. He's firing over the walls, it looks like. Oh, wow. Yes, he is. Oh, he is. Oh, no. He's, he's, he's not, not going to go for the draw. Explosion. Oh, no. He's going to get taken out goes. from bombs there. GG's are called. Kiesel takes the first in the best of three. Indeed. Stay tuned for the rest of the games in this best of three. Matisse is behind, but not out. Indeed. Gosh. Wasn't expecting that, were you? Um, I expected Matisse to be a bit more aggressive, so at least his nuke would have helped do some more damage. Because <laughs> at the point where he had no units, there was no, obviously there was no point in which he could back off. He might as well have just kept heading in. Yeah. He could have forced a draw, I think. I'm putting my choice out there for Matisse. Do we have a fanboy? Or is it justified? No, no, no I have reasons. I think <laughs> this map favours Matisse really well. There's a lot of metal in this map, and it will favour Matisse's playstyle. Mm. Matisse will expand a lot, but he'll also contest a lot and make it difficult for Kissel. I think it's going to be a really hard fought match there. So, welcome everybody to game two in this best of three of the final for the December Deadlock Tournament, a 1v1 tournament presented by ExodusEsports.com. I'm Zayforex and I'm joined here by Marshall. Hello there, and our players have just spawned in. Matisse in the dark blue on the south pole going for bot first. Kisel on the north pole in uh, gunmetal grey also going for bot first a second. Yeah. And M Matisse, wow, a big blunder there already. Oh, Two bot no. factories. 
What was he doing? He's crumbling maybe, under the pressure. Maybe he really had a problem with the placement there, but I don't know why he did that. Mm. Really unusual. I think the mechs probably would have been alright, but... It did look alright. Just. <laughs> Meanwhile, Cassell onto his second factory now as uh, Matisse just joins him with the air. Again, placing it and replacing. Losing time, not Matisse's strongest performance. Yeah, this is really unusual. I wonder if he's having problems with his hotkeys, but starting two things and not doing anything. Second air factory already up for Cassell, already first spider now produced. Still sort of struggling to get going at the moment. He's still explaining with his first engineer. Same sort of thing as well from Matisse. He managed to assist his engineers out a bit quicker, so he's not too far behind on that front. Mm. And looking at the build queues there, lots of bots and lots of air coming out from Kissel. So, uh, not many vehicles as of yet, but personally, with the size, I wouldn't go for vehicles just yet. I think docks are definitely yeah, the way to go. Definitely not. It'll take a very long time for your vehicles to actually get anywhere. You could um, use teleporters, of course, but then again, that's much mm. more sort of the long game, if you will. Mm. <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised if we see vehicles, though, because they're pretty hard-hitting. They yeah. do give you access to the anti-air. But I think we're also going to see a lot of air. We saw a lot of air from Matisse last time. Matisse favours a lot of air. And uh, on a big map like this, it's going to be really powerful. Really, really powerful. Second air coming up from Kissel now. Um... He's actually planning another bot factory, but he already has two air. Yep. Matisse, once again, taking the lead in terms of medal every single game. He just he expands. expands. Yeah. He's always with multiple engineers. A lot of people only have one group of engineers. Matisse just expands in multiple areas. Yeah, and some really far away from his base as well. Over here, we can see one going around. <clears throat> so he's probably going to work his way towards uh, yeah. that clump in there. I think so. That's a great position to be taking early on. Five safe mechs uh, is obviously really powerful. Yeah. As will this island over here. Mm. I think that might be pretty mm. good to go and get some uh, some some docks, interceptors, and an air faber over there. Yeah, there's so much metal there. You're, you're very vulnerable to docks, of course. But um, there's so much metal in such a dense area. If you have a load of air, then you can protect, protect, bleh, protect from the docks because the docks can be uh, can be bombed while they're underwater, which is useful. Yep. Uh, docks coming in from Kissel here. This is bad news for Matisse. Let's have a look from Matisse's point of view. He notices it just Egg in range the now. And the fabricator. And wow. That's done. So one engineer down. One mech is not going to be built, and this mech is probably going to go down. That's a lovely little win from Kissel. Um, just after four minutes here. Nothing for Matisse to shut him down. He's just going to have to wait until these bots get over there. Luckily enough, there weren't all four docks actually attacking it. He might even get in just in time. He gets in in time to chase them away. He doesn't lose the mechs. That's a nice yeah. little win. Saves him another little bit of metal income for a little bit longer. Of course, docks can't shoot while they're underwater. So it's a sort of neutral zone, if you will especially for bots, although the aircraft can still uh, contest each other over the skies. Yes, we see both Matisse and Kissel building those five <coughs> mechs within the Enclave. Kissel actually building a single laser turret with walls before he moves on. If we pan around, those walls aren't actually going to help him too much. Because he's at the bottom of a little hill here, so most units are going to be able to shoot over those walls. Yeah. Not sure how, how useful they'll be. Yeah, the walls really need to be on the, the top lip of that wall. Yeah, if they were a little bit further forward, they might have done better for them. And there's the crater there as well, of course, which you might uh, might choose to use. For, four for air advantage. factories from Kissel and four from Matisse as well. Both players concentrating very heavily on air. Uh, Matisse expanding over to the middle icy area, but so many docks here coming in from Kissel, spreading out all over the place and putting the pressure on. Matisse manages to save his engineer for now, though. Sending in bombers and fighters. Going to be fighting for a lot of map control. This bomber is not, not doing anything. Yeah, I think he got a little bit unsure as to what he was actually supposed to be targeting there. But, uh, again, he could have taken down those docks, but he didn't lose any, any hummingbirds, which is, which is good. 
And there's the bombers now, taking down a lot of those docks. Nice. <coughs> Meanwhile, on the uh, other side there, we did have a few dock confrontations, but it's nice here. We've got an air fabricator from Cassell taking that uh, mechs there, and as long as it's not hotly contested by Matisse, it'll pay for itself eventually. And this fabricator here, just managing to survive and get away. Oh, oh no, maybe not. Doesn't quite dodge the bombs there. Does get taken out. That's yeah. a pity. Big time investment spent getting that engineer all the way over there. And that's always the loss with engineers like that. Oh, big air fight coming on. Kisel actually outnumbers him now. Takes care of the bomber. And even exchanges between the fighters. Slight advantage for Kisel. Kisel is concentrating heavily on the air. What does he have? He has one, two, three, five air factories now. Five mm. air factories. Sixth one actually being built. So he's he knows he knows Matisse well enough. Matisse also concentrating on more air factories. He's got one, two, seven. three, four, seven, seven <laughs> air factories with another three queued. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely a, a fight for the air right now. Yeah. Walls also going up from Matisse to protect this little enclave. Air fabricator over on the island over there just got sniped as well, which is really good for Matisse, just stopping him expanding over there. He does need to send a few docks over there though to finish off the yep. mechs. Clean um, up the mechs. Yeah. So a nice radar here going up just to keep keep an eye out on this sort of entire area there, which is good news. Uh, this commander here, I'm not entirely sure quite why he's moved so far away, but then again he is building factories, so at least he's doing something. And, uh, I think it's all right. It yeah. keeps you a little bit safer against docks coming out of the water there. However, raiding coming forwards from Kisel. Mm. Some of those docks catch out that engineer. They haven't actually killed the engineer. They just happen to be in range of the mechs. That engineer might even get away. And Matisse sending out his bots on really wide patrol paths here. Just uh, roaming around the opposite side of the, the map, getting a little bit of intel. Large air force coming in from Cassell. Wow, that, that blob of hummingbirds is really quite profound. <clears throat> but Matisse has the bombers. They're going for the docks in the water. Well, I, w I would have gone for the docks in the water. There we go, incidentally. But I can they bomb uh, underwater? They can, certainly can. Uh, it's one of the best uses for them, bombing the uh, the docks while still in the water. Just terrible micro here for Matisse. He's not using his bombers. He ends up losing that mechs and a lot of his own docks as well. Mm. What he's doing, he's concentrating on something else right now. But he's got docks pretty much everywhere on the rest of the map there. Nice area patrol. <clears throat> yeah. He's sending all of his fighters over to that side to deal with these bombers coming in from Kisel. He'll catch them out almost. Takes care of one. Hits the second as well. One of them survives. Nice bomb and Kisel there. putting in the pressure coming up against this anti air turret trying to be built by Matisse. Will the bomber get in there in time? Concentrating on the Faber maybe. Take down the Faber. Yes. And get the girl. There we go. Fighters coming in to protect for Matiz. He outnumbers here. Unfortunately, the anti air did not get finished. Mm. And keeping tightly bunched up on the edges so he gets into a better confrontation here. Ends up winning more and he wins a huge amount. Wow. Very even in the air forces, but the placement of all of his fighters nice and close gives him a higher DPS in a shorter area. And that really works out well for him. Gets into a very favourable confrontation and wins the air game temporarily. Looking at the army tab now, they're still relatively even, although Matisse, 17 factories to 13. And looking at the economy for Matisse, he needs a few more P-Gens, but otherwise he's alright with those 17. So mm. he does need a little bit more power, but he's just building so many air factories. He wants that air superiority so yeah. badly. And uh, and rightfully so, I think. Um, he keeps sending out his little engineers to do raiding. I mean, they're getting shut down by Kissel every so often. He sends out so much to so many different areas. It is a pain to deal with. Oops. He also has docks in the middle next to that island. Probably going to try and clean up those <coughs> mechs. That's a nice three mechs to pick up. He's expanding in the middle with an engineer here, building two laser turrets right up towards Kissel's base. Expanding with that engineer in the middle of the ice area here. Mm -hmm. Doing good work. And the big advantage for Matisse right now is he has more power. So once he starts taking more metal, then he'll he'll start capitalizing it because he'll have the power to do that. Yes. Kissel with a bit less power at this stage. Air units coming over at Kissel's little enclave in this area. Fighters going to come in. We'll see them come in. Not quite as tightly bunched. This could end up better in Matisse's Ooh, favor. Well, no, it looks like Kissel got a few reinforcements. Kissel takes the win there. My mm. goodness me. 
More Oof. reinforcements coming in from Matisse though. Still even. You really, you really can't go with uh, against a larger group of fighters. It's even more pronounced than normal. If they have more fighters than you, you will lose the air game. Yeah. If you bunch, if you tightly bunch your units as well, you'll end up winning much more. Lots of docks moving around from Matisse, trying to get little wins here and there. They could be going raiding a few more mechs, like yeah. over here, for instance. They could uh, move in and just see if they can raid the mechs. But uh, does Matisse actually know that that mechs exists? No, he does not. So uh, I suppose that's why he's not moving in. But if he did, that would be... a. Uh, you know, any any raiding like this is good because Kiesel isn't floating, which means, you know, he's, he's using his metal quite well. But if he does start to take hits to it, you know, that will really dent his production over time. I think Matiz still has the air game by a small amount. Lots of air factories have gone up from Kiesel. Kiesel trailing on metal right now. All of Matiz's force is actually in the water here. Yeah. That's <clears> really bad. Ends up losing quite a lot of his forces. That was a big group that could have done something. They were stuck in the water, not getting good wins. If they stay on this little island, they can destroy any uh, any bots that actually come up to try and attack them. They'll be kind of safe on that island. I've just noticed a really interesting move from Cassell. All of his air factories have been toggled to assist the commander, so he has got a, a ridiculous stack of hummingbirds just sat on that commander as Perhaps soon as they're he's... built. Perhaps he's worried about uh, a bomber snipe. Perhaps he's also using this just to stack up the fighters um, mm. and keep them really concentrated as well. But either way, it really helps him because you know you've got that defense and you've got the advantage as well. And Matisse now seeing that that commander's there, he doesn't want to go in for the engagement. It also oh, hides the numbers. Oh wow! Look at the fighters. Oh, they're out of oh, range. He's wow. staying out of range. He's staying grouped hard. Oh, now he's getting uh, he's getting collapsed on, but he's still grouped up too hard. <laughs> Voicing some of his fire on bombers, but he's grouped up much, much tighter and at the, the moment. And the docks as well. Right sort of area. Oh my gosh, the docks, even though they're inaccurate, <laughs> they were such a thick clump, they actually managed to hit them. And Matisse, he had more air units. He ought to have won that confrontation, but yeah. great placement from Kiesel and the fight over his own docks ended up working well for him. Good work from Kiesel. Kiesel, if we look on the opposite side of the planet, has tons of docks the beginning bombers? to roam around. Oh wow, well, the defensive bombers there. I'm sorry, I just had to say it. They didn't work out too well. He lost a lot of them, unfortunately. That mm. last bomb, however, seals the deal and gets rid of that attacking group, though. Yeah. And they will be able to go for the docks in the water as well. Matisse wants to stay on the shoreline and make sure he controls it. Yeah. <coughs> More bombers coming in to reinforce. This is the one thing. Kiesel hasn't got any bombers. He needs to win the air game, so he, he has to concentrate on fighters at this stage. Yeah. Um, but looking over at the opposite side of the planet, and Kiesel is taking more map control and stopping that expansion from Matisse. Matisse, though, still leading 240 to 170 medal, doing a great job currently controlling the game. And rebuilding his mechs on this island here with his, uh, his mad expansion. Working out well for him. Yeah, we have the confrontations now, though. The docks have been moved away from the shoreline, allowing the ones from the sea to move onto the land without a hindrance, taking a mechs and running away. Back into the water, though. They will get a, potentially a couple of shots there. No, I think they're out of range. But the Air Force, they're really uh, doing a yeah. great job at defending. <laughs> have a look at uh, Matisse's base. It's just air factories on air factories on air factories and more air factories planned. He uh, he is fully <laughs> committed to the air, and uh, His... I think he realizes he can win uh, with just air. Yeah, and and that's it. There isn't a counter to it, especially not with dots. Um, and and the vehicle anti air is okay, but it can't be everywhere at once. You'll Ooh, see the a lot air of map here Does get taken down. Sorry, you were saying about the uh, the vehicle anti air. Yeah, vehicle anti-air, you know, it's slow, uh, it can get taken down, it's, 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 it's slow, it's not easy. The, the air is so dynamic, he can just move straight over here, going to send in all his fighters. This is favourable for him if he manages to exchange all his fighters, and he's just going to come straight in. The docks are going to do some work, but honestly it's not enough. It's just not enough. And that was favourable for Matisse, and now he's pretty far ahead in the air game. Kiesel has lost a lot of air, and this is very bad news for him. It means Matisse can concentrate wherever he wants and raid wherever he wants using his bombers, and there's nothing Kiesel can do about it. Kiesel this does have a large location. number of air factories, though. That's the prime location he wants to raid now. That's five mechs all over the place. Very easy to pick off with his bombers. Mm. His main base, though, under attack from Docks, who are just taking a lot of pot shots at all of these fighters right now. 
They're doing a... And they're now happy to tank so that the bombers can come in there to destroy the docks and finish them off. <laughs> Almost taking down a fighter, or two, or three. <laughs> He's still beginning to collapse down on the main base. It's going to take some careful uh, bomber micro to make sure he doesn't lose too much. Not great placement from the docks there. Matisse losing a number in the water as he leaves them right next to the shoreline. But oh my goodness, the air from Matisse is so ridiculous. The army tab there, 345 to 237. Yeah, and he's building air units, not the cheap, cheap docks. So mm. that's, oh, that's wow. why it makes even more of a difference. Here we go. Fires coming in from Kiesel, trying to catch him out of position. But Matisse is just going to group up as much as possible. He's even moving his docks forwards as if he wants to be aggressive. This could be interesting because with the air support taking out all of the docks from Kiesel, his docks on the ground can actually do a great bit of work at the main base and, and that's one option. Of course, he is now in snipe territory because he has air control and all he has to do is get enough bombers and Kiesel can't really stop him because there's no ground anti-air turrets uh, for Kiesel to stop. The scouts are coming out from Matisse going over the main base now. He, I don't think he's spotted the commander. The commander's staying out of the main base to keep him a little bit safer. Yeah, I think Cassell is definitely trying to hide his comm right now. But Matisse's air force is over the base. Oh my goodness gracious me, the docks are going to fall. But the really good yeah. split up there. But then again, the docks the are on patrol clump, to try and split them up. But the clump just docks from Matisse, everywhere. yeah. Trying to get some wins with the fighters on the outskirts. Lost a number of get bombers focused though. Down, though. Gets focused down, loses all of his fighters. Now he has nothing left. The bombers have free reign. There aren't all that many bombers loose. left though. But the thing is, he has so many factories, he can produce a lot of bombers right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He still has enough fighters to maintain the control of the skies. And he needs um, to find Kiesel, the commander. Moving his commander safely away from the main base, but also towards this area of ice where he can potentially get some nice bit of income. And um, Matisse actually has lost a lot of the metal. All of the areas he had on the other side of the map have finally been raided by Kiesel. So both players actually on the same metal. Um, but Matisse still leading on power. I'm going to rebuild some of his mechs points now with a couple groups of engineers on either side. Yeah, these airfabbers here, though, are going to come under Doc's attack. He doesn't want to lose them to Doc's. That would be embarrassing for those airfabbers. He has got the defensive Doc's coming in, though, so that's going to help him. And the, the bombers there as well, so that's going to really uh, put him well there. But he needs the mechs so that he can keep producing the air because he has such a domination over the air right now. Mm. <clears throat> I think at this stage, Matisse actually needs to be careful. He has like a great position, but because he's lost all of his medal right now, and he's actually stalling his medal really, really hard, he's not actually in a brilliant position. And with all of these docks all over the place, it's just awkward for the bombers to get rid of them all. Um, mm. So he needs to rebuild these mechs as quickly as possible, get his eco back on track. He's already caught up, or beginning to catch up with Kissel now. Oh, those air units are just about to find the commander. I think they did find the commander, so I think mm. Matisse might potentially go in for the snipe. I don't think he has enough bombers, but he, he might... He doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't have the critical mass, but seeing them out there in the open, I think he might have just given a command to get all of his air factories just producing bombers for the next, the next build. Certainly seems that way. I think he's still got some fighters in the mix, but there's definitely nothing wrong with that. You don't want to go all bombers unless oh, he yeah. just has no air and no way to get back. He's going to come in here. He's going to exchange fire with all the oh, fighters that are there. And the bomber's wow. going to focus down on that commander now. Down go the bombers. Commander's taking a lot of damage. <laughs> bomber's going to get at least a second swipe in. Maybe even a third and commander's taken so low. And all the commander's going to do right now is attack fighters. And the bomber's yeah. going to take him down. There is nothing he can do. Yeah, he's gone. That's the GG. So it's one all. Goes to the third game. Wow. Well played to Matiz. He played fine. He played solid. He abused the unbalancedness. <laughs> and he took the win. Um, and he chose a map that really favoured him. I think that was one of the big advantages as well of that map. Congratulations to Matiz. Everything to fight for. One for one in this best of three. And the last game will decide who wins the December Deadlock Tournament. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome everybody to game three in this best of three final in the December deadlock tournament, a 1v1 tournament presented by ExodusEsports.com. Kisel and Matisse, one game apiece, everything to play for, £50 to the winner and £20 to the loser. Kisel chose the Lava Planet. There's some debate over who, which map, uh, which...
player this will favour the most. I actually think this favours Matisse's kind of play, but we'll see what happens. Let's introduce the players, Marshall. Indeed, so Kissel on the North Pole in Gunmetal Grey once again going bots first. And Matisse on the South Pole in a lovely saturated blue there going vehicles first. So he's changed it up. Kissel going vehicles second or air second and then the third being the other. So which one's he gone for second? He's gone air what second. What are you going to do with docks? What are you going to do with docks? I think By the time going... your docks get there, a couple of tanks are going to stop them down. There is such a narrow choke point at the bottom of this. Mm. I, I think they're going to be fine. So yeah. I'm not surprised Matisse went for vehicles. He is going second air. It would be shocking if he didn't go for air second. Matisse, uh, Kissel also doing the same. Get out the chrono cam. A look, two engineers expanding for Matisse, trying to split up and cover more ground. Nice job here from Cassell. Planned a wall in there to ensure those mechs. Really good job from him there. And the Firefly already out with interceptors following, so that's going to make that wall in slightly more difficult for Cassell. If Matisse can wow. shut that down, that's an early Faber lost. That is pretty huge. Oh, the Air Scout notices that early uh, engineer, though. Will Matisse mm -hmm. have noticed it? He probably would have noticed that. So this was his first engineer. Kiesel has invested resources and a lot of time getting that first engineer down here to contest this area because this is five early metal he can contest. And uh, apart from air fighting over the islands on the back, this is one of the only areas you can contest. And if he gets this in here, you can do a lot of fighting down the less narrow edge. Um, and that is a, a great win if you can get it up. Fighters moving in, going to do some more recon. Tanks aren't going to move forwards for Matisse, though. Matisse, however, not uh, going for a bomber just yet. In fact, no, I, I tell a lie, it just starts building at the, the second air factory as well, so air third is going to come out as well. But the wars start going up, so hopefully if Cassell can keep that fabricator alive for long enough to get that uh, turret up, that's going to really help him out. Honestly, at this stage, with the walls and docks behind them, you can protect against tanks. It's the only, the only bombers is the only thing you have to worry about, and he's just going to send all of his fighters down here to protect that engineer right now. Yeah. It's the only thing he really needs to protect. Obviously, he ought to protect his main base from bombers coming in, but this engineer is three times, four times more valuable than the other engineers in his base, just due to the time he's invested. Here comes the bomber. The fighters are here. The fighters don't prioritize the bomber. If the fighters oh, prioritize the, the fabricator, bomber, no. then this engineer would be alive, but he's dead. No, he's microing. He's keep dodging, <laughs> but he's dead. He's a dead man walking. Oh, he's gone. See? Yeah. He never stood a chance. Oh, that he was such a, a shame. That was such a shame. But Kiesel scouting the rear islands there, making sure Matisse does not go for them. Matisse getting out an air fabricator now, though, so he might be moving over to that island. So Kiesel needs to make sure that Matisse does not get those islands. There we go with the air fabricator moving over now. And fighters now moving over for Matisse. What does Matisse see? He doesn't see anything on radar. I think he's just wanting to scout out. And he's sending fighters there with an engineer moving in immediately afterwards. So, oh, here we go. Stop the scout. Get him a little bit more intel. What is the Faber going to go for? He's going to go straight for the mechs. Um, I was thinking perhaps building a vehicle factory so you could get out ground anti air would be a nice move. Mm. Um, but he's just going to go straight for the mechs. This is typically what Matisse does anyway. He builds the mechs. Doesn't matter if he loses it later. And Matisse is surging ahead in eco. He's built all of the eco on his side very quickly. Giselle, however, has kind of secured this area. He's at least got a wall out to protect that area. And uh, moving forward with the commander as well. Yeah. But Kissel, so much metal in his base that he hasn't built. He's already in a hole. Already in a hole. And Matisse is going to surge ahead in terms of metal income. The one thing Matisse needs right now is a load of power. He's got two engineers working on power there. And the hole is augmented if you look at the uh, vehicle to docks course vehicles versus docks usually tends to favor the vehicles and uh, there's a lot more docks for Kiesel than there are tanks although he has transitioned more to vehicles but docks still form a uh, central part of his army and Matisse getting the wall in there so that's going to really help no, him defense. Matisse, Matisse is going next level turtle strats he's going double walls here oh no he's uh, he's got a double wall planned and oh, some turrets no. He's been uh, he's been speaking to the Dutch players to get some tips off them, and he said, <laughs> "Go double walls. Double walls always works." And we can pretty much call the GGs right now. Matisse has this in the back. 
But he's going to turtle up quite hard. He's actually just going to say, it's okay, you can take these seven mechs. I'm all right with that because I I'm going to take islands. the other side. Yeah. I'm going for the islands. My eco has been built up quickly. Kissel now catching up. He's rebuilding the last few mechs available in his base. And, uh, and rebuilding the mechs in the middle means that he's now going to catch up to Matisse. Can Matisse build power quick enough? He's working on it. He's also working on the air factories. Two, four, five air factories for Matisse currently. And, uh, and just three, fourth air factory coming out now for Kissel. Kissel is behind on air. Air fight coming in. We see the air fight go down on the islands. Kissel manages to get a snipe in. He loses his fighters. Another air fiber on the way. Because another <laughs> air fiber on the way. This is classic Matisse. He's he's ready for something like this to happen, and he sends an air fiber over almost immediately afterwards. He might have even sent that air fiber moving before the other air fiber died. Mm. That's that's classic Matisse right there. Yeah. So he's going to keep rebuilding those metal and maintaining his metal lead. He he actually needs this to even equal Kissel's score right now. Yeah, he does. Although the factories are eight apiece, Fabers for eight Matisse. Uh, and unit count favours Cassell, but again, mm. double walls. I think actually if Cassell pushes in now, he might be able to get those docks around the walls. No. Double walls. Double walls. He'll never get around the double walls. The tanks in that turret will kill anything before they even get close. And they'll be covered by the walls. It'll never happen. Oh, you need a, a real weight of infernos. I must admit, I haven't seen the double wall strats before, so I'm completely alien to this one. Oh dear. <clears throat> How long have you been playing? Since Alpha? That's just terrible. <sighs> Look, the only time I've seen double wall strats is in Age of Empires 2. I apologise. <laughs> You're missing out. Anyway, a whole group of air units favouring uh, Matisse right now, and he comes in with severely dominating numbers and loses almost none of them. Giselle takes a huge loss in that air fight, and now two air fabbers over here, ready to protect this area. Getting up a radar, actually, just give him a little bit of intel there uh, against any incoming fighters that come in. Mm. Um, and uh, Matiz is fine. He doesn't matter that he's lost the middle, because at the moment he is winning the islands. Uh, and he's not winning it because he's built on them. He's winning it because he's getting the radar up to give him some useful intel, and because he's won the air game, which means he's won the islands, which means he, he has more potential medal coming in right now. Kissel has no more medal incoming. He has the limit of his medal. More fighters yeah. from Kissel moving over, but he's outnumbered. This is not a confrontation he wants to get into. Yeah, he he wants to keep those fighters away from Matisse. I don't. I think he needs to understand that perhaps he's lost the islands for now and just focus on getting into Matisse's base. Matisse's base, though, he can still get a teleporter into the back of his base. This yeah. is something I did, uh, and it worked a treat. But I think once he sees those double walls, I think the teleporter in is the only way he's going to get in. Okay, so Matisse now, he's got double walls, so he knows he, he can't be breached. This is the way it is. So he's going he's going T2 vehicles here. He's only got one engineer on it right now. He, I wouldn't be surprised if he piles a bit more on a little bit later, but he can afford to. Because he knows he can't break down the main base right now. Interceptors we actually in. see Pelters going up, though. Pelters coming up from Kiesel. That, that could, could work. That could help. Are they in range, though? I don't think It'll be in range of the turret, I think, but not much else. Uh, another air fight coming in. Air Faber is untouched. Air Faber is invincible, and Matisse tries to chase down Kissel. Barely even numbers, so needs to be careful about the confrontation. More reinforcements coming in from the south. I'm going to pin some movement these. There's no escape. Oh, wow. And in they come. Down go all the fighters for Kissel. Kissel is once again set back. He lost more fighters than he killed, so he's losing the air game by even more. Matisse can't really fight over these anti-air units. There's way too many in the middle. It doesn't matter too much. Already 20% of the way through that T2 factory. Yeah. But... Lots of air factories doing nothing for Matisse though. <clears throat> now he's queued them up so they're doing okay. It's still one air factory that's idle. Mm. He's actually working on a vehicle factory. That's a little bit of a surprise. Not something I thought I'd see him do, but I think he just he he needs a little bit more ground units just to make sure he can defend against a push. Yeah, although I feel as though Kissel really needs to realise he needs to think of a way other than air and other than... There's the teleporter oh. going up there. Ooh. There we go. Has he got the air fabricators and the air support? He He's building, building the fabricators. The yes. This now, remember, could work. Teleporters are very cheap. They are very, are very cheap. cheap. But you do need more than one air fabber. 
Oh, you need quite a few to yeah. get it up quick enough. Because yes. Matiz will notice. Matiz has the... And we've got the interceptors coming into the base. Will he scout the air fabricator? I think oh. he is. No, no he's he won't not. scout it right now. Well, he might do. The anti -air. He might do. A of hits. Ooh. Uh, no, he doesn't. Oh, that was so close. So I kind of want to make sure here he doesn't get too much information, mm. too much intel. A lot of air factories have actually gone up from Kissel. <laughs> Look at the cool. army tab. Kissel leading 14 factories to 13. Yeah. Does he see the teleporter? I think he did. He sees the teleporter. Yeah. So now he is going to be really aware of a teleporter coming in. You see he's moved his air units onto the other side of his base. Mm. He's aware for something to happen in this area. And he, he has that air scout there. It there we go. Anything. Oh Patrol, no. Patrol There's those, those the Faber. Oh. And it goes down. One Faber would never have got it up quick enough. And already yeah. now. Oh he stopped building the T2. Oh no. <laughs> He's gonna lose it. He's gonna lose it. He's sixty percent of the way through, and he stopped that Faber. It's going down sixty-one sixty. Oh, oh. Okay, he started building again. That could have been terrible. That would have been a huge waste. That would have set him back a lot. So the Pelt are now putting in fire on this turret and pushing him back. Um, Kissel has managed to quickly win all the medal that's available to him. So he's only trailing one sixty-nine to two twelve. About 25% mm. behind in income. It could be a lot worse. The other pelts are now putting in fire on this other turret here. One pelter going up from Matisse further back in his base. What's moving forwards? Don't want to get in range of this turret though. That turret's just getting free kills when it was going to die. Marla putting in a bit of damage against these fighters. Getting a bit of intel though for Kissel. Kissel still needs to be careful because he's behind in the air game. Still very far behind. And Matisse is up to, to T2. He needs a, a big confrontation over his anti-air. That's the only way he's going to get back in his air. And Matisse building anti-air static around his islands, which is just going to get to the point where it's impossible for Kissel to ever win those islands. He's always going to be behind in eco. His only chance of getting back up is getting his T2. He has started a T2 vehicle factory, got five engineers on that. Probably going to start stalling um, as he gets a little bit further through that project. But the T2 is already up, and the T2 engineer, the first one, has just come off the ramp for Matisse and that is pretty big and pretty important for him see what he does with this first one perhaps gonna work on power but he already has 21k power so he doesn't necessarily need to he can build up his uh, his metal I'm just surprised you haven't seen either player stalling their eco too much yet Kissel once again keeping a lot of fighters next to his commander for to protect against the snipe. Already 50% of the way through his T2 vehicle factory, plunging all of his eco into that. Stalling his power pretty bad, but trying to plunge into it. We're starting to see a few bombers coming out for Matisse as well. And that's a substantial air force over his base, so I think I think he's probably preparing ultimately to, to push out. With what uh, though? Will Kissel's, he go for the air snipe or the? Kissel's ground? got a cheeky air fabber next to these islands. Not sure what he's going for. Ah, he's trying to put a <laughs> teleport on one of the islands. That's not going to work. No way, Jose. Good plan, but it'll never work. <laughs> Didn't even get within hundred meters of it. No. no and way. you're just going to see more and more anti-air build up there. Matiz will invest those resources to make sure that. Kissel can never take this. This and is the sort of time where we factory. could go orbital. We could go orbital. Like, Matisse yeah. wouldn't even know what was happening if all this stuff started getting reclaimed. But he does have T2 now, so he'd be able to put up umbrellas really, really quickly with those famers. Mm. Mm. And Shellers now making their way to the front lines. Shellers, the long range units against groups of T1 like this, perfect real choice to break this siege scenario. Mm. And Matisse <laughs> increasing his eco with the T2 medal, now almost doubled down on Kissel's uh, medal income. Kissel has done the right thing. He's won the central tug of war. It's just he did not contest those islands early enough. He needed yeah. to get the air to keep those islands. Otherwise, he's really boxed Matisse in. If Matisse didn't have those islands right now, Matisse would be so, so far behind. Well, he'd probably be catching up with his T2 eco, but with the eco that made the well, would he have won, gone he for T2? Up more on the other side. Yeah. Nah. I really think Orbital is the way to go right now. It's the one layer that we haven't engaged in that could change the game. It's possible. Our kids would be useful. But the window is closing. 
for both teams. Having Arcids for the uh, Shadows could be useful. Uh, reclaiming all of the this stuff from uh, Matisse on these islands using Orbital. The problem is right now Kissel is behind on Eco. Which means he has to get wins out of nowhere. Second T2 vehicle factory going up for Matisse. Pushing ahead with his advantage. Playing the slow game right now. A lot of engineers on T2 power as well. He currently has 41k power. That is huge. Oh, the shell is taking the pelter down. Ooh. He take the pelter up. down. A couple of losses, but it was probably worth. Now exchanging shell of fire. As mm. shell has come out from Kissel. We actually see vanguards in there from Kissel, which is an interesting choice. Yeah, I think they'll help get through the walls. Possibly. If they get that far. Bombers moving forwards. Don't want to really be moving forwards in this situation. Oh, the, the bombers going to... I think they're, they're going for the shellers. They can't get in. <laughs> but one, one bomber is all it takes to take care of a sheller. It's always very favourable if you can do that. But the it takes second a long time and a lot of resources really. to build them. Doubling down on the eco now. And mm. two vehicle factories pumping out T2. Pretty much exclusively shellers. I think he's just going to get a huge weight of numbers there. Yeah. I've and this at this point as well, Kissel's back of his base is so vulnerable. Yeah, I mean Matisse, Matisse could do the teleporter. Has so much like viable defense. If any invader comes in on his island, if he got a teleporter down there, Kissel wouldn't even notice it. Kissel doesn't have radar. <laughs> Kissel doesn't have radar. If he got it down just about here, Kissel would not even know. It doesn't even need to be there. It can be here. Although again, of course, yeah, so we can't well the range on the max. Yeah. Okay, Matisse is ready. He knows he probably has the big weight of air units right now. He just needs to make sure he doesn't fly over any anti-air. Although there's the flak the there. To. Oh, there's yeah. two flak. There is flak there. He's still very secure in the middle, actually. Second T2 vehicle factory going up. But I think Matisse is going to try and push forward with all of his shells right now. The game is his to push. There's actually a T2 Max he can push on. He's still doing a good job of trying to build up his eco, building up the eco in the middle of his base and the back of his base as well. Working out well for him. Shellafire coming in. Ooh. You don't want to be grouped up near the front there. Shellafire yeah. is just going to keep getting uh, wins. Oh. I think these bombers are looking for the, the shellers. If the shellers are gone, it makes an easier job for Matisse. Oh, Shellafire coming in from Kissel. And focusing down on the turrets, bit of an odd choice when there's all these units here that are a bit tastier. T2 Max goes down from Kissel. Kissel desperately trying to get his eco up, but Matiz slowly putting a stranglehold on that. Oh wow, rain from above, Shellafire fire is coming in and all Kissel can do is retreat now. Look at this air in the face, <laughs> oh if he goes in he's going to lose so much. Fighters coming in, what are they really going to do here? They're bunched up so tightly. Oh, the air fights are insane right now, but Kissel does not have the numbers. He does not have the numbers, and he's lost air. And there is a significant amount of fighters now for Matisse. Matisse, there's also no ground anti-air as well. Mm. Uh, moving in close, trying to do damage to the shells, but there's enough tanks here to kind of protect. Whole load of anti-air putting in some work, but the, but the bombers are going to come straight in against the commander. The flak's going to put in the work. A lot of those air units are going to go no, down. No, the bombers go in. down and the commander oh, is wow. taken down. Oh. Single pass was sufficient there for Matisse to take the win. Matisse claims first place prize. He just had too much. Congratulations to Matisse, who takes first prize of £50. And congratulations also to Kissel, who takes the runner-up prize of £20. Great tournament. This was the December deadlock presented by ExodusEsports.com. Uh, congratulations to these two players who made it to the final and got a cash prize. And thank you to all of our other entrants in this tournament who came here and fought for glory anyway.